Hey guys, it's Sam here. Welcome back to the channel. Today is a shoulders workout, but I'm going to be training with Ed, who I'm looking after here. So he's going to be competing later this year, all being well, men's physique. So shoulders are really important. The round looks a little bit awkward. So you're going to see all of the contest prep shoulders routine. I'm not going to put every set in because it's extremely busy today. So it's just going to be top sets for both of us. Pressing with shoulders and then looking at all areas of the deltoids and talking through that and a little bit of posing and summarizing to finish. Just warming up, catch in a second. Well done. Nine. Yeah, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Well done, bro. Much better. <laughs> the next thing we're going to be doing is the hammer strength behind the neck press machine. So this is one of their plate loaded machines and it's really good for putting a little bit more emphasis on the side delts. So it's going to be a little bit easier as it's not the free weights. What Ed had found most challenging in the whole routine, not just the shoulder day but in the whole routine, is that dumbbell overhead press. So it's really good to uh, see how those sets are coming along and I've been working really hard to make sure that he's training to failure on every set. Really seen that in those sets there so I'm very happy with that and the rest of the routine is going to be slightly easier than that because we'll be using like machines and then isolations for all those parts of the delts. So behind the neck press now. Well done. Well done, mate. For your next set, I'm just going to take a look at um, a little bit lighter weight and taking it, taking it all the way down a little bit further. But um, that's good effort, man. It's no criticism of you. It's a point for me to uh, make sure I'm optimising you. But I think from this one, you benefit from um, a little bit more stretch, a little bit yeah. more stretch. In it. So we'll take you lower weight and um, really force you to take it lower but um, basically it's, it's just make, the main thing in all of this is making sure you were training hard and to failure so that was increasing the weight a lot of the time but this one we can probably back off from okay, yeah, sure. Yeah. Want to try again with just 20, yeah? Cool. <coughs> Touch lower. Yeah, yeah, this is much better. Yeah, nice to make. Wow. 
well done. Let's go, let's go. Yeah, let's go, make it count. Over in this side of the building, we've got all of the lighter dumbbells. So we're moving into this side for our isolations on belts, starting with the rear belts as for Ed and for most people, it's slightly less developed on the rear belts than on the front belts. So we're gonna prioritize that in the isolation exercises. We're gonna be doing the rear belt flies, possibly with support from the bench if we need it. And that's gonna be the first isolation, then more stuff for rear belts, then working into the middle belts and finish off. But, uh, Really good one with dumbbells, especially if you've got a more basic gym and you haven't got um, the rear delt fly pec that combo machine. If you just want to do it with dumbbells, we're going to show you how to do it for the rear delts. Good job, mate. Next up, we're gonna be doing the rear belt flies on the rear belt fly pec deck combo machine, what I was mentioning earlier. And if you're really focusing on rear belts, you can combine both. Sometimes, like I'm saying, you get the machine where you're lying horizontal, like parallel to the ground, like really on your stomach and then fly like with just your elbows there but you don't see that piece too many times so if you really want to focus on rear belts and you've got a sort of regular equipment around you it's going to be like either your dumbbells or or that uh, pec deck rear belt fly machine for getting the most out of rear belts in isolation so as we're really focusing on that we're including both and that's going to be our next exercise What we're doing now is moving to working on the side belts a little bit more, but we're going to be using a compound exercise with the upright rows. It's a little bit old fashioned, but I still like it and I find you can get a little bit more work on the belt weights out of it. If you put the hands wider than you might want to, then you get less elbow flexion, less use of the biceps like in there. So we take a bar like this, get it wide enough, it's using less of your biceps and upright rowing.
Now a little wrap up of today's video. Obviously we went on to check out the posing there and as it was Ed's first time at looking at this seriously, I didn't want anything to disturb. So we haven't recorded that this time, but basically it was going through all of the poses that are required in men's physique at UK DFBA and comparing that to what they got at PCA because there's different options for competing. But if you didn't know and you're looking at men's physique, basically you have the men's physique quarter turns, but what they've added in um, in different federations in different ways is a side like obliques pose with the arm up um, an abs pose from the front with both arms up and a front and back double biceps variation where you kind of do it like in bodybuilding but without um, doing the same pose with your legs because they're not judged they're in the shorts there and different federations are doing mixtures of different um, different poses there so over at PCA You've got the shots from the side where you show the obliques with the arm up and at UK DFBA you don't have that but you do have the front and double biceps ones along with the general men's physique quarter turns and you do have the abdominal ones so it was running through all of that explaining all of that and then actually for training on it I put on an interval timer and we were going through the poses together set to an interval timer for about eight seconds per pose and then move you on. So if you were practicing your posing endurance for any category, I'd recommend getting an app on your phone like Interval Timer or something that will just do stuff for when you do circuit training is what it's mainly designed for, but just set it up for loads of rounds of posing and have the sound on in it that it'll just, it'll just keep cycling you through holding something for eight, nine, ten seconds and then move you on. Obviously, if you're gonna do like the mandatory poses for bodybuilding, it would be eight, but I'd recommend doing loads of rounds on the trot because your posing endurance is quite important in a lot of these things because if it's close in the contest, you can expect to be compared about four times. So I think you need to be stamina-wise and not sweating and shaking-wise and, and smoothness-wise, confidence-wise, good for sort of four or five rounds of posing. So I'd recommend... If you're training for that, you're in contest prep that you put in, you know, 20, 30, 40, like, sets in an interval timer and just run through them and do that. Not every day, you don't have to be every day except at the very end of your contest prep, but from a few months out, start doing that once or twice a week and run through just for how smooth you're going to get the transitions. That it looks right, you're going to need to film it, of course, but once you've got the gist of it from filming it, that your transitions and the actual angles that you hit when you land in each pose are satisfactory, then you can just rattle through this and make sure that you're working on the endurance. I wouldn't recommend working on the endurance too much until you've got the actual poses sorted, otherwise you'll be ingraining in the wrong way of doing it and have to relearn it, perhaps. But once you've got it looking good on camera, to put it on a timer and just keep rattling through that for that posing endurance so that's what we were looking at and i did not want to disturb ed there with his first attempt at all of this by filming it from different ways and making him perhaps feel a little self-conscious a little bit too prematurely when we've got ages till looking at contests so that's what we finished up on today it was a good shoulder session the main things that i decided to uh in parts in this were having the hands a bit wider on the upright row so it uses less of the biceps and more of the shoulders mainly the deltoids when pulling up on the upright row and maybe just take it a little bit lighter on the behind the neck press machine so that you could get the more stretch in it i was uh, explaining them and demonstrating so that's what what we're going to be changing in that kind of training session prioritizing shoulders for the rest of it and the rest of his physique there, we're looking at the back really. So with men's physique in particular, it's that V taper is really highly prized. So that's really coming from the width of the deltoids, the, the V taper shape in the, in the lats or back width development is more important than thickness, I would suggest. And then legs enough that they don't look like complete sticks in the shorts, but not overdeveloped to the point that it's potentially make you know to grow those legs and the supporting muscles that are tensed every time you're doing squats and stuff like that maybe not doing legs like so heavy so that you can maintain a really thin tight midsection really good abs so men's physique taper fullness up top abs legs like good enough to not look like stilts but not you know not really assessed so 
not needing to push it so heavy on, on legs. So we're looking at routine that's prioritizing the stuff on shoulders and back because his chest is actually a strong point, so it's gonna look very full in the in the chest anyway. So that's that's how the routine's looking. That's how we're preparing and training with posing, and I just thought I'd summarize that before finishing off the video, but wasn't really suitable to be doing that in the busy gym this time. So if you have any questions about any of the categories and the poses required, the federations in the UK, or any other questions at all, drop them in the comments. I will be back online to pick all of that up and have a great week. Cheers. Cheers.